Hi guys, good morning. So today we are going to discuss our first chapter of the oral radiology that is the radiation physics. So starting with this, let's discuss some of the highlights in the history of the x-rays. Very important is who discovers the x-ray. So W.C. Ronjan, it discovered the x-ray in the year 1895. Very important. So the W.C. Ronjan, he found a new ray that he named as X. X means unknown. So this is an unknown X-ray which could pass through most of the substances and casting the shadows of the solid objects. Fine. So Ronjan he discovered that the X-ray it could pass through the tissues of the human but not the bones and the metal object another important question that Ronjan was the first one who experiment in late 1895 was a film of the hand of his wife so he first experimented this film of the hand of his wife and her name was Bertha. Fine. So after 1895, next was 1896 in which the first dental radiograph was discovered by O. Walkhoff and in 1896 again the first dental radiograph is taken in the US it was of the skull which was taken by WJ Morton and here 1896 again the first dental radiograph in the US was taken on a live patient by C E Kells and in 1901 the first paper on the dangers of the x-ray radiation or x radiation it was taken by W H Rollins and in year 1904 the introduction of the bisecting technique so it was introduced by W. A. Price. Important. Next in the year 1930, the first pre-wrapped dental films were introduced by the Eastman Kodak Company. While in 1913, the first X-ray tube, important, was introduced in 1913 by W. D. Coolidge. Very important. And in 1920, the first machine made the film packets by the Eastman Kodak Company. And in year 1923, the first X-ray machine was introduced by Victor X-ray Corp and Chicago. While in 1925, there is introduction of the bite-wing technique by HR Rapper. Important. While in 1933, the concept of the rotational panoramics were taken into consideration by Dr. Hisa Tugunumata and in 1947 there was an introduction of the long cone paralleling technique important which was introduced by by FG Fitzgerald and in 1948 there was the introduction of the panoramic radiology by Dr. Yerjo Veli Petiro. So these are very important for your exam point of view. So after this coming on to the some of the basic terminologies first is the radiation so the radiation these are the transmission of the energy through the space and the matter coming on to the matter so matter is anything that occupies the space by the space and the and it has the inertia fine so it has a mass the matter it has a mass and it can exert the force or it can be acted by a force so this matter it can be of three states it can be solid it can be liquid or it can be gas coming on to the x-ray uh, x radiations it means that it is a high energy radiation that are produced by the collision of a beam of the electrons with a metal target in an x-ray tube. 
and x-rays these are a beam of the energy that has a power to penetrate the substance and record the image shadow on the photographic film while the radiology it is that branch of the health science which are dealing with the radioactive substances and the radiant energy with the diagnosis and the treatment of the disease by means of both ionizing that is the x-ray and the non-ionizing that is the ultrasound radiations so after this coming on to the atom which is an electrically neutral so this is the nucleus this is the inner most shell that is the k shell this is the middle shell that is the l shell and m shell so in this the electrons these are the electrons it revolve around the nucleus at a high speed fine so innermost is the k shell and it ranges from k l m n o p q like from the innermost is the k shell then the l m and so on up to q fine so the shells these are also having a number like for k it is 1 for l it is 2 for m it is 3 for it is just for the identification purpose fine so after this see in this only the two electrons these may number 1 number 2 the two electron only these two electron they may occupy in the k shell fine like in the l shell you have found 1 2 3 4 5 5 electrons and the number it keep on increasing fine so in this the electron it consists of an electron it consists of an proton and neutron they have an unique characteristic see these are plus these are the protons these are the neutrons and these are the negatively charged these are the electron so in this the electron the proton and the neutrons they have a unique characteristic that the electron it carries an electrical charge important electrical charge of minus 1 fine and the neutron it has no charge it is neutral while the proton it carries a positive charge or plus 1 fine so after this see now we have three atoms we have hydrogen atom we have helium which is very important and we have lithium iron or lithium atom fine so the hydrogen atom it consists of this is the proton and this is the electron in its k shell so basically it consists of an electron and it consists one proton the hydrogen atom very important is the helium so the helium it consists of the it consists of two protons it consists of two neutrons and it consists of two electron in the k shell so the helium ion it consists of two electron two protons and two neutrons fine while the lithium atom it consists of two shells in which it consists of three protons consists of three neutrons and it consists of three electrons two in the k shell and one in the l shell three electron fine yes so in this 
the number of the protons it contains in the nucleus it determines the positive charge number one and the anatomic number is the number of the protons which is in the nucleus it also determines the identity of the element important this is the anatomic number which is represented by z coming on to the anatomic mass which represented by a so this is the total number of the proton and the neutron in the nucleus of an atom it is called as the anatomic mass right so after this coming on to the forces so we have the electrostatic force first so the electrostatic force it is the uh, attraction between the protons and the electrons protons are the positive charge electrons are the negative charge while the neutrons these are having no charge so the interaction of the positive and the negative charge it is the electrostatic force very important that the fundamental particle which is present in the proton it is the quark important for your mcq fine so after this second is the centrifugal force so in this it pulls the electron these are the electron it pulls the electron away from the nucleus see here is the nucleus so the centrifugal force it pulls the electron away from the nucleus next is the binding energy so what is binding energy so the amount of the energy which is required to remove and these are the electron so the amount of energy which are required to remove an electron from its orbit it is depends upon the anatomic number of the protons so this is the nucleus here are your protons and your neutrons so the binding energy is the amount of energy which is required to remove an electron from its orbit so after this coming on to the ionization so in this please remember e is equal to p which means when the number of the orbiting electron in an atom it is equal to the number of the proton in the nucleus so the atom is electrically neutral but if the electrically neutral atom if it loses an electron it becomes positive ion and then the free electron is negative ion and this process of forming an ion pair is called as ionization fine i am repeating it again see e equals to p if when e is equal to p then the atom it is neutral or you can say that the atom it is electrically neutral if an electrically neutral atom it loses the electron then it becomes positive ion and the free electron is negative ion so this process of forming an ion pair is called as ionization fine so what all are the causes of losing an electron or electron is lost from what all are the causes so it can be lost number 1 either due to the atom by heating or number second or electrons it can be lost due to interactions or you can say due to collisions with the high energy of the x rays or the particles such as the protons fine so these are the two or the three main causes of losing an atom or you can say or or losing an electron from an atom so 
it is of two types we have the non ionizing radiation we have the ionizing radiation so the non ionizing radiations they have a sufficient energy to move about the atoms in the molecule or cause them to vibrate but not enough to remove the electron these are non ionizing radiation so ion, uh, ionizing radiations that uh, that has an enough energy to remove the tightly bound electron from the atoms thus creating the ions so the non ionizing they have not enough energy to remove the electron while the ionizing radiation they have the enough energy to remove the tightly bound at electrons from the atom thus creating an ions right so after this coming on to the radioactivity so in this before discussing the radioactivity the radiation it is the transmission of the energy through the space and the matter so it may occur or the radiation it may occur in the two forms in the form of particulate and electromagnetic first we are going to discuss about the particulate radiation right so the particulate radiation it consists of an atomic nuclei or the subatomic particles which are moving at high velocity examples are the alpha particles the beta particles and the cathode rays these are the example of the particular uh, particulate radiation starting with the first that is the alpha particle so in this first is the helium nuclei as i have already told you that the helium nuclei it consists of the two protons and two neutrons and two electrons so the helium nuclei it consists of the two protons and the two neutrons which results from the radioactive decay of the many large uh, atomic number elements so the helium ion it has a maximum ionizing potential very important for your mcq point of view that out of the helium hydrogen and lithium the helium ion it has the maximum ionizing potential and these are densely ionized matter through which they pass so when the neutron of the radioactive nucleus decay they produce a proton a beta particle and a neutrino while second are the beta particles so the beta particles these are identical to the electrons in this the high speed beta particles that are not densely ionizing and this these are able to penetrate the matter to a greater depth than that of the alpha important so the beta particles they have an beta particles they have high speed and these are not densely ionized and they have a penetration power more than that of the alpha particles right this this is all about the particulate radiation coming on to the second one which is very important these are the electromagnetic radiations yeah in this third one the alpha the beta third one is the cathode rays so these are also the high speed electron but these are produced by the manufacturer device manufactured device like the x ray tubes right so coming on to the electromagnetic radiations so it is the movement of the energy through a space as a combination of the electric as well as the magnetic field see elect as the name suggests the electro it means the electric and the magnetic radiation it means the electric and the magnetic field fine right? so it generated when the velocity important point 
of an electrically charged particle is altered fine examples are the gamma rays visible light radio waves x rays microwaves and tv uh, tv ray, uh, waves so the electromagnetic radiation they travel at the speed of the same as that of the speed of the light that is 3 is to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second important point that the electromagnetic radiation they travel same as that of the speed of the light that is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second so after this coming on to the electromagnetic spectrum which is very very important for your mcq point of view see from the radio to the cosmic rays it is the increasing order of the energy fine so in this the radio tv visible x-rays gamma rays and cosmic rays so in this the increasing order of energy is more in the x-rays in the gamma rays and in the cosmic rays very important commonly asked mcq after this coming on to the characteristics of the x-rays so they travel in a straight line cannot be focused to a point differentially absorbed cause the fluorescence harmful to the living tissues it, they are the high energy waves contains no mass they are neutral or they contain no charge they travel at a speed of light that is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 amp per sec right. after this coming on to the very important point that is the x-ray machine so the primary components or you can say the heart of the x-ray machine these are the x-ray tube and the power supply important so the x-ray tube it is positioned this is the x-ray tube it is positioned within the tube head along with the same component of the power supply so in this we have three types of x-ray unit it is wall mounted type or the fixed to floor type it is the portable handheld x-ray unit and it is mobile unit which is mounted on a stand coming on to the x-ray tube head so this is the cathode this is the filament this is the anode this is the target surface the electrons from the tube comes here this is the target surface from where it hits and the electron it always move from cathode to anode right now coming on to the starting with the x-ray tube very important point that all the dental as well as the metal uh, medical x-ray tube these are called as coolidge tubes why because they follow the original design of the college which he introduced in the year 1913 fine so the basic apparatus for generating the x-rays or the x-ray tube it is composed of an cathode this is the cathode and anode this is the cathode and this is the anode these two are the basic apparatus for generating the x-rays so the cathode it it is the source of the electron that flow from cathode to anode so the cathode and the anode they lie within the evacuated glass so here they lie in an evacuated glass see this is the cathode this is the anode they lie in an evacuated glass or envelope or tube fine so in this when the electrons when the electrons from the cathode strikes the target this is the target so when the electrons from the cathode target or strike the target in the anode they produce the x-rays fine so the electron emits from cathode to anode in the target this is the target they produce the x-rays so starting with the first component 
of the x-ray tube that is very important the cathode so the cathode it consists of see cathode it consists of a focusing cup this is the focusing cup and it consists of a filament so this is the filament this is the filament fine so the uh, starting with the first one that is the filament so th this is the filament it is a source of the electron it is a coil of a tungsten important it is the coil of a tungsten wire which is 2 mm in diameter and 1 centimeter or less in the length it is mounted on a two stiff wire it is heated to the incandescence by the flow of the current from the low voltage source important that the low voltage source and it emits the electron at the rate which is proportional to the temperature of the filament very important and this is called as the thermo ionic emission fine important so the cathode it is negatively charged it consists of a filament this is the filament and a focusing cup so next is the focusing cup this is the focusing cup so in this the negatively charged this is the negatively charged this is the focusing cup it is the negatively charged concave reflector which is made up of molybdenum very important see the coil is made up of tungsten while the molybdenum uh, sorry while the focusing cup it is made up of molybdenum important it is parabolic this shape it is parabolic shape and it is electrostatically focused the electrons into the narrow beam it directed a small rectangular area on the anode which is called as focal spot in anode there is a small area on the anode which is called as fs that is the focal spot so in this the electron move in this direction these are the electron these are moved in this direction these are repelled by the negatively charged cathode and attract to the positively charged anode so in short when the electrons they move from cathode to anode it is the target from here it gets strike and it converts into the x-rays so from the cathode to the anode in the anode there is a target when the electron it comes from the cathode to the anode it hits to the target and forms the x-rays so it is electron move in this direction repelled by the negatively charged cathode attract by the positively charged cathode from cathode to anode movement of the electrons so after this coming on to the very important that next is the stationary anode yes one more important point regarding the focusing cup that the focusing cup it prevents the oxidation please note it down and the burn out of the filament of this it prevents the oxidation and burn out of the filament the focusing cup so after this next is the stationary anode so this is the stationary anode so it consists of a tungsten target which is embedded in the copper stem this is the tungsten target which is embedded in this a uh, copper this is made up of copper stem important so it convert the kinetic energy of the colliding electron into the x-ray photon see this is the target tungsten target when this is present on an anode and this is the cathode where you can see there is a filament and a focusing cup when the electron moves from the cathode to the anode it hits the target cell and it get converted into x-rays 
so why tungsten is used because it is the ideal material it has an highest atomic number that is the 74 so it is the best material because it is most efficient in producing the x-ray fine it has a high melting point which withstand with the high temperature the tungsten it has a high thermal conductivity which dissipate the heat into the copper stem and finally it has a low vapor pressure at the working temperature which maintains the vacuum that is why tungsten is used now coming on to the copper stem so this insufficient process more than 99 percent of the electron kinetic energy it is converted into heat it is readily dissipating its heat as it is a good thermal conductor important that is why copper is used because it is a good thermal conductor which dissipates the heat from the tungsten thus it reducing the risk of the target melting additionally the insulating oil between the glass envelope and the housing of the tube head it carries the heat away from the copper stem important after this coming on to the very important that is the focal spot so the focal spot is it is the area see this is the effective focal spot size on the target to which the focusing cup directs the electron so very important point that the sharpness commonly asked mcq that the sharpness of the radiographic image it increases as the size of the focal spot decreases very important commonly asked mcq so the sharpness of the radiographic image it is inversely proportional to the area of the focal spot that is why the heat generated per unit the area uh, target area increases and as the area of the focal spot it decreases it means the sharpness of the radiographic image it increases but the focal spot or the size of the focal spot it decreases important so the size of the focal spot it influences the radiographic definition important mcq so if a question comes the size of the focal spot influence what so your answer should be it influence the radiographic definition of the image so coming on to the focal spot that is the line of the focus principle so to take the advantage of the small focal spot while distributing the electron over the larger areas of the target the target it is placed at an angle to the electron beam important the angle is called as the angle of truncation and it is 20 degree commonly asked mcq so the effective focal size is 1 is to 1 but the actual which is smaller than that of the actual focal spot so if a question comes that the size of the actual focal spot so your answer should be it is 1 into 3 mm fine commonly asked mcq very important so after this coming on see this was the stationary anode now coming on to the rotating anode this is the rotating anode so very important the function of the rotating anode is to dissipate the heat from the focal spot very important commonly asked mcq so if the tungsten target is in the form of a bi beveled disc it rotates when the tube is in operation if the target tungsten it is in the form of a beveled or a disc it is in the form of a beveled or a disc then it rotates when the tube is in operation the strikes it's uh, strike the successive areas of the target and it leads to the widening of the focal spot important by an amount corresponding to the circumference of the beveled disc and therefore distributing the heat over 
this extended area. So this is the rotating anode. So the focal spot it is now called as focal track in the rotating anode machines. So it can accept the tube current of the 100 to 500 milliampere that is 10 to 50 times of that of the stationary anode. Very important. So there are 3000 rpm that is at least to 3000 revolution per minute important it cannot be used in the intraoral dental x-ray machine it may be used in the top, uh, tomographic or the cephalometric unit in the larger units or in the extraoral and uh, it always used in the medical computed tomography in the x-ray machines which requires the high radiation output so it cannot be used in the intraoral dental x-rays machine after this coming on to the heel effect which is very important so the heel effect it is basically refers to the loss of the intensity of the x-ray beam in the periphery in this both the cathode side of the beam it is more intense than that of the anode side important mcq in which the distance is increasing from the anode which leads to the inverse square law accentuated as an angle of the target reduced so in the dentistry if the size of the film is small then the heel effect is not seen important after this after the cathode and anode coming on to the second important that is the power supply so the power supply it is necessary to heat the cathode filament to generate the electron important so the power supply it is necessary to heat this filament which was present in the cathode so it established a high voltage potential which is between the anode and the cathode to accelerate the electron towards the anode important mcq that a high voltage potential it is generated in between the cathode and the anode to accelerate the electron from the cathode to anode so for moving the uh, electrons from the cathode to anode a high voltage HVP is necessary to generate between the cathode and anode. So it consists of the two transformers filament transformer and a high, volt high voltage transformer. This is the filament transformer and this is the high voltage transformer. So the uh, filament transformer this is the small one and it has 3 to 5 volt and high voltage this is the high voltage it consists of 65,000 to 1 lakh volts of the current important. So it lies within the electrically grounded metal housing which is called as the tube head so these transformer this lies between the tube head. It is an electrical insulating material usually the oil important which surrounds the tube and the transformer after this in this the flow of the electron through the tube that is from the filament tube to the anode from the cathode to anode then again back to the filament so in this we have two types of coil we have the primary coil these are the primary coil we have the secondary coil so the transformer device it is used in the two step that is it is used either in the step up or it is used in the step down voltage so in this two coils are used the primary coil as well as the secondary coil so in this the x-ray production in this the two circuits are used in which the filament and the high voltage so this is the filament and the high voltage these two are used in the x-ray production next is the power supply so it reduces the voltage about 10 volts it is regulated by the filament current control that is milliampere selector very important point for your mcq that it regulates the filament temperature and thus the number of the electron emitted is 10 milliampere very important this is not the same as the current in the filament circuit in this the milliampere it is milliampere it affects the heating of the filament important please note it down and consistent radiograph 
requires the fixed kvp and the milliampere very important if a question comes that for the consistent radiograph what all are required so your answer should be the fixed kvp and the milliampere so the tube voltage in this it is regulated by the auto transformer it has a high voltage which is required between the cathode and the anode which give the electron sufficient energy to generate the electron when the electrons these are passed from the cathode to anode it hits the target and leads to conversion of the x rays so the kilovolt peak selector adjusts the auto transformer important the it boosts the peak voltage for the incoming line current that is from 110 to 220 volt up to 60000 to 1 lakh volt so energy is 60 to 100 kev which is sufficient energy to generate the x rays so if the question comes that which uh, at what amount or the sufficient amount to generate the x rays so your answer should be the sufficient amount the sufficient amount of energy which is to generate the x rays so your answer should be it is 60 to 100 kev it is the energy which is sufficient to generate the x rays important after this coming on to the power supply so in this the polarity of the ac current it alter, uh, alternates the 60 hz so does the polarity of the x-ray tube at the same frequency so the x-ray these are produced when only the filament is negative and the target is positive x-ray it is produced when the filament is negative and the target which is present in the anode it is positive so in the other half there is no production of the x-rays so this half of the cycle it is called as inverse voltage or the reverse bias so also the x-ray production it is maximum at the peak voltage in the form of the pulses so the 60 pulses of the x-rays these are generated each second and each having a duration of 1 is to 120 second important it limits the x-ray production to the half of the ac cycle and it is called as self rectified or half wave rectified So this is the half wave rectified and this is the full wave rectification. So some dental x-ray manufacturers they produce the machines that replace the conventionally half rectified to the full rectified waves. So this results in an essentially constant potential between the NO2 cathode. Mean energy of the x-ray beam they produce comparatively higher when operated at the same voltage next is the timer so this is the timer so the timer it is built into the high voltage circuit to control the duration of the x-ray exposure it is subjecting to the filament to the continuous heating at the normal operating current shortens its life so to minimize the filament damage first the timer sends the current through the filament for about half a second just to avoid the damage to the filament first the timer it sends the current to the filament about half a second then applies the power to the high voltage circuit important so in some circuit designs a continuous low level current it passing through the filament and maintains a safe low temperature so there is shortening the delay to preheat the filament these two points are important in this next is the tube rating so the uh, x-ray tubes they produce the heat at the target while in operation as you all know it measures in the heat where the hu kvp into milliampere into seconds the diag uh, dental diagnostic tube it is approximately 20 khu so the heat it is removed from the target by the conduction of the copper anode then to the surrounding oil and the tube housing by the convention to the atmosphere these are the two ways to remove the heat from the target important 
Tube rating describes the longest exposure time. Important. The tube can be energized for the range of the voltages and the tube current that is in the milliampere values without the risk damage to the target from the overheating. Next is the duty cycle. So it relates to the frequency with which the successive exposures can be made. So basically the duty cycle it relates to the frequency. So in this the interval between the successive exposure it must be long enough for the heat dissipation important this is the function of the size of the anode and the method used to cool it after this coming on to the production of the x-rays which is very important so in this most high speed electrons they traveling from the filament to the target from the filament to the target and release their energy as a heat and occasionally the electron convert their Ke that is the kinetic energy into the x-ray photons in the formation of by the formation of bram starling law and characteristic radiation so the bram starling law it is the primary or it is the major source important point and characteristic radiation it is the minor source important starting with the Brem Starling radiation so the Brem Starling in the Germany or in the German word it means the breaking radiation so in this there is a sudden stopping or the slowing of the high speed electron by the tungsten nuclei in the target the prime it is the primary or the major source of the radiation important occasionally electrons from the filament they directly hit the nucleus of the target atom all the kinetic energy of the electron it is transformed into the single x-ray photon so in this we have two situations in which first is the direct hit so in this if a high speed electron it gets direct hit the nucleus of the target atom so in this all its kinetic energy it is transformed into the single x-ray photon and it is the Brem Starling photon of the maximal energy and secondly the most high speed electrons they have a near or the wide misses with the atomic nuclei so in this when the high incident elect energy electron when negatively charged or the high speed electron it is attracted toward the positively charged nuclei it loses some of its velocity and it's alter its path of the deflected or the deaccelerated photons and in this there is the brim star link photon which is of lower energy so it alter the pathway it does not get the hit direct hit it always alter the pathway see in this when an incident high energy electron it ejects an photo electron therefore it creating a vacancy fine so this vacancy it is filled by the electron from the outer orbit so this is the vacancy it get filled with the outer electron fine now this part in which a photon it is emitted with the equal energy to the difference in the energy level between the between these two orbits fine and it is the characteristic radiation photon and after this it is the high energy level electron in which the electron from the various orbits it may be involved giving rise to the other photons in this the electron from the various orbits it may be involved and giving rise to other photons and in this these energies these energies of the photons thus created a characteristic of the target atom so this is the characteristic radiation 
after this coming on to the factors that controlling the x-ray beam so in this we have the exposure duration exposure rate energy shape and intensity so these are the parameter the exposure time in which is which controls the number of the photons generated if it doubles or the, when the exposure time is double then the number of the photons also get double with the same energy very important commonly asked mcq tube current it is directly proportional to the quantity of the radiation produced and the tube voltage it is the directly proportional to the increase in the mean and the maximum energy of the photon and the quality of the beam filtration it absorbs the low energy photon collimation it absorbs the low energy photon and it reduces the scattered 60% which improves the quality of the beam and decrease the patient exposure very important so one important function of the collimation is to decrease the patient exposure very important mcq inverse square law it is the intensity of the x ray beam very important table next is the half life value so it is the thickness of the absorber such as the aluminum which is required to reduce by one half the number of the x ray photon which are passing through it so the beam quality it refers to the mean energy of the x ray beam this line is very important for mcq coming on to the very important that is the filtration so the x ray beam it consists of a spectrum of the x ray photons of the different energy the energy of the photons it should be sufficiently high to penetrate through the anatomic structure and reach the image receptor so the function of the filtration is to remove the portion of the long wavelength protons commonly asked mcq that the function of the filtration is to remove the portion of the long wavelength protons so the low energy photons these cannot reach the receptor and these contribute to the patient exposure risk without any benefit so these low energy photons these should be removed from the filtration from the beam with the help of the filtration so in this we have two types of the filtration we have inherent filtration in which a primary beam it is passing through a glass window this is the glass window of the exit tube in this there is an insulating oil and the tube head seal it is approximately equivalent to 0.5 to 1 mm if the question come which of which type or which material is used as an filtration so your answer should be aluminum aluminum filters are used commonly asked mcq aluminum filters are used second are the added filtration so in this there is a placement of the aluminum disc in the path of the x ray beam the aluminum disc it may be added in 0.5 mm in the increments so the total filtration it is inherent plus the added filtration which is 1.5 mm of the aluminum up to 70 kbp and 2.5 mm of the aluminum for the all high, uh, all the higher voltages important next is the collimation please don't get confused filters are of aluminum collimators is of lead so the metallic barrier which is usually the lead important with an aperture in the middle it is used in the size of the x-ray beam thereby volume of the irradiated tissue so in this we have two types the fixed and the adjustable so again on the basis of shape we have either the round collimator or we have the rectangular collimator and we have the tubular collimator round r r t these three that is the round the rectangular and the tubular these are used in the dentistry very important mcq so this is the round collimator in this the circle is of 7 cm in diameter it has a thick plate of radio opaque material which is usually the lead it is circular opening centered over the port it is increase the radiation exposure important 
coming on to the rectangular one it just has a larger than the x-ray film size 2 intraoral and specifically re uh, requires the film holding instruments important it improves the image quality it reduces the scattered photons that is the Compton scattering very important for your MCQ it reduces the exposure area and thus the number of the scattered photons reaching the film coming on to the interactions of the x-rays with the matter so in the dental imaging the x-ray beams they enter the face of the patient interacts with the hard and soft tissue and then strikes with the digital sensor or the film as the beam it goes through the patient it uh, reduces the it reduces in intensity so the x-ray photons these are either absorbed scattered or no interaction so in this we have no interaction we have coherent interaction we have photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering Starting with the one that is the coherent uh, scattering which is important. So it is classical elastic and Thomson scattering important points. It is also called as classical elastic and Thomson scattering. So when the energy is low the incident photon which is less than 10 keV it passes near an outer electron this is the outer electron momentarily excites the electron at the same frequency the excited electron then returns to the ground state and generates the another x-ray photon with the same frequency or energy fine so this is the incident photon and this is this one is the scattered photon next is the photoelectric absorption so when in this in the photoelectric absorption when an incident this is an incident ele uh, photon which is interact with the electron in an inner orbital of the atom in this it creates a vacancy fine so in this an electron vacancy in the inner orbit it leads to the ionization of the atom fine and after this see an electron from the this is the higher energy so an electron from the higher energy level it fills the vacancy and it emits the characteristic radiation and in this in the fourth one in this all the orbits these are subsequently filled and completing the energy exchange completing the energy exchange in this all the orbits these are filled fine very important point that photoelectric absorption it does not cause the film fog if a question comes which of the following is, resp is responsible for not causing the film fog so your answer should be the photoelectric absorption very very important point after this coming on to the Compton scattering so in this there is there are 49 percent of the interactions so in this the number of the electrons in the bone it is 5.55 into 10 raised to, uh, to the power 23 cc it is greater than that of the soft tissue so in this when an incident photon it hits it leads to the re there is a recoil of the electron and there is the scattered photon which is of low energy but after, uh, apart from the scattering photon it leads to the recoil of the electron so this is the Compton scattering very very important table for your MCQ so in this we have photoelectric absorption which constitutes about 23 percent in which the electron affected is in the inner or orbit very important 
net effect on the atom it causes the ionization filled uh, from the outer and orbital and there is a release of the characteristic radiation photon in this there is an incident photon ceases which leads to recoil of the electron and its uh, significance is intensifying screen optical density of the image next is the compton scattering which constitutes about 49 percent and in this the outer orbit it is affected with the electron and the net effect on the atom is through ionization in the photon it is deflected and there is the recoil of the electron at this increases the scattering third one is the coherent scatter which is constitute about seven percent the electron affected is mostly the outer orbital and the net effects on the atom it excites the ground state that is the photon and the photon is the incident ceases or it get deflected and the electron it is not present it contributes to the film fog little of the film fog important it causes the film fog while the photoelectric absorption it does not cause the film fog so at the last these are the units of the measurements so the exposure it can be measured in the coulomb per uh, coulomb per kg that is in the ronchen the absorbed dose it is the si unit is the gray that is the traditional unit is the rad rad equivalent dose that is the sievert and the traditional unit is rem effective dose the si unit is sievert and the radioactivity it is beckwell it is the si unit and curie is the traditional unit very important commonly asked mcq so guys this is all about the radiation physics please go through it once try to make the notes thank you